Okay, look at the person next to you and just simply say to them, were you born? <laughs> affirmative, affirmative, everyone was born, everyone was here. Okay, so let's just start by just saying and being really clear about this talk. They're giving me 10 minutes to literally change your life in 10 minutes. And so in those 10 minutes, the first thing you must know is that when you were born, I don't care who your mama was, your daddy was, whoever it was that pushed you when the doctor said push. They did their job. So for some of you who don't like your mothers, get over it. She pushed, and that's what really matters, right? Absolutely. So because you were born, you were born with something very, very important. And all of the other speakers have been talking about this, but in these next few minutes, let's, let's put this in perspective of exactly what is it? What is it that you were born with that makes you so incredible? And what it is is that you were born with power. You were born with it. You don't have to wait for it. You don't have to look for it. You don't have to try to like pretend to be like somebody else who's powerful. You were born with it. And whether you are Pinky Peach or Caucasian or African American or Latino or Native, wherever you are in the world, you were born with power. Look at the person next to you and just say to them, well, first of all, just say to me, I was born with power, Dr. Vernon. Just say it. Let me hear you say it. Now let's say it to the TV audience can hear it too. Let me hear. Now that's what I'm talking about. Now just to make sure that you know that you know, look at the person next to you and say, "Did you do you know that I was born with power?" Go ahead. This is good. You were born with it. You were born with it. And you were born with seven dimensions of power. It's behind me. I'm hoping it's behind me. And you're looking at it. You're born with seven dimensions of power. The first core dimension you were born with is spiritual power. You know what? I am an executive coach. I work with young people. I work with business leaders. I had this Carlson School of Management young woman come to me once. And she said, Dr. Verna, I'm doing great in school, but I'm about to lose my mind. I mean, I mean, I, you know, I have been in depression for a long time. And I said to her, I said, listen, young woman, I said, don't you think that your body needs the whole you? Do you think you can just exist on your mind or exist on your education? You need your spirit, sweetie. When you were born, you were born with a soul, a spirit. You were, your creator gave you something so powerful. And we forget in, the, in our society, we forget it's spiritual power in you that generates something amazing. And when you know that, you know, I have been um, listening to... Um, you know, all of the newscast about the death of our great, great man, Nelson Mandela. A great man. But just think about that, right? When he was born, there was something lodged into his spirit to do something about his world. And when it came time, he said, it's time now. It's time now. Look at the person next to you and say, you know what? It's my time now. Just look at him. Come on, quickly, very quickly. Very quickly. So there's seven dimensions of power. The first dimension of power is spiritual power. If you don't have it, go find it. And listen very carefully. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about finding your core purpose, finding who you are, Finding your birthright, find that thing in you that's so much deeper than anything in this material world, and you'll be so much happier. The second form of dimension of power is your energy. Have you ever had someone walk into your house and suck all of the positive energy out of your house? Yes, right? And then they want to eat your chicken and watch your TV after they suck all of the energy out of you. Or they come into your office and they suck all the energy out of you in your office. Why? We are people with energy. You have the power of energy. Let me tell you, if you haven't done energy work, learn how to use and pull up your positive energy. You have it. Energy is contagious. It's a wonderful thing and people are attracted to it. People want energy. The second thing is the next dimension of power is the power of thought. You have the ability to think a new thought. You know what I love about the, uh, the presentation is that, you know what? Your commander, you had a new thought. 
And no one, listen, I'm a born again believer in Jesus Christ. I love God. I love Jesus. But not even God can tell me what to think. That's my power. I get to think what I want to think. You have to harness your power to think. The next power that you, is the power of vision. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I see Miss Dara on here, here, here in the audience. You know what? She had a vision of her own publishing company. I love that. And, get, and here you are. You have your own publishing company. Love that. What's your vision? Women all over the world, what's your vision? Men and women, what's your vision? What do you see for yourself, your family, your future, your community. What do you see? And here's what's so amazing about power. I can't tell you what to see. The next dimension of power is the power of your words. You have got to watch your mouth. Look at the person next to you and say, if it's not good, don't say it. Just <laughs> It's time to watch your mouth. If it's not positive, if it's not going to help you, stop talking. For some of you, you're going to have to stop talking, right? Because things that come out of your mouth aren't, aren't positive things. It's the power of your words. You get to say anything you want to. So be careful what you say. And then there's the power of the written pen. You have the power to write something. Let me tell you, I bought my goals here. They're sitting right over there in that chair. I take them everywhere I go. Do you know why I'm here today doing a TED Talk? Because I wrote it down, Miss Alyssa. I wrote it down. You don't know I wrote it down. I wrote it down years ago. Do you know why my own talk show is hosting and, and actually happening within the next week all over the Twin Cities and soon to be all over the world? Because I wrote it down. Look at the person next to you and say, stop thinking it, stop talking it, and write it down. Quickly, quickly. We only have a few minutes. And then there's the power of action. You have a power of action. I just went to go, I just went to go and see, um, you know what? I love President Nelson Mandela because he didn't just talk about it. He said, remember that speech he gave? He stood up and said, if it means that I must die for this thing, I'll do it. I'll do it. Right? You have to be willing to take a what? An action step. Now, you can't stand up here in this audience, but I just want you to think about this for a minute. We just want to take our children to see Frozen, right? Walt Disney Frozen, great movie. And at one point, when she finally discovers who she is and her power, she looks around her whole community, and she says, are you ready? And she takes her foot, and she just like, bam, just like that. And everything, like, whoo, just Let's just try it. Come on, wherever you are in the world, just wherever, tap your foot, one, two, three, just boom. Oh, wasn't that great, right? Wasn't that kind of fun? Why? Well, put your foot down in your life and take an action step. Now, let's go to the next slide. You will end up being one of four types of powerful people. You're going to use all of this power to be one of four types of powerful people. And I wrote a little book many years ago that I was asked to write. And I was asked by my creator to write this book. And it was very simple. And I said, yes, I'll write the book. But exactly what is the book? Because I didn't know what I was supposed to write. And then I got the name of the book, and the book was called The Power of People, Four Kinds of People Who Can Change Your Life. And then I said to God, OK, that's a really cool title, but who are those four people? Because I don't know who they are. And then, for the next three years, in isolation, I wrote this little book. Who today, we call the little purple book that did. I'm the founder of a project called Girls in Action. Do you know what we teach our girls? We teach them that they're powerful. I don't care who your mama is, how much money you have, don't have. I don't care what your government or regime will or will not let you do. Let me tell you, girls, you were born with power. Put your foot down and do something about it. Something. Do something about your life. And those t there's four types of powerful people. They're adders. They're subtractors. They're multipliers and dividers. Here's my call to action. 
Here's, here, here's what I'm supposed to do with this world, right? I'm supposed to teach people that you are called, you were born powerful. Now, here's what I'd like you to do. I would like you to challenge yourself to become an extraordinary adder. Who's an adder? Someone who's continually, consistently, intentionally adding value to their own lives, to their families, to their community, and to their world. You are an adder. I truly believe that people were born to add to society. I truly believe that people were born for a purpose for such a time as this. You know, Nelson Mandela, he moved beyond being an adder. He moved to being a what? A multiplier. This is someone who takes the ideas of an adder and takes them and puts their spin to it, puts their energy to it, and make it so. Does it, has anyone ever watched Star Trek before? Do you know what Jean-Luc used to say to his crew? When it's time, what did he say? Make it so. And the whole crew would just come together and work it out, right? Multipliers make it so. Nelson Mandela said, whatever I have to do, I will make it so, so that we no longer are a nation that is divided and injustice will go from this place called South Africa. And as a matter of fact, it began to go from the world because he became a multiplier. It's a whole other level of power. It's intention. My goal is for you to be an intentional adder. Listen, if you're not adding to yourself every day, you can't add to me every day. Right? Are you adding to your children? Are you adding to your school? Do you know why I do Girls in Action? And actually one of our members is right here, and one of our women leaders, Manetta Johnson Lee, right here in the audience with us because we want to add. And then of course there's subtractors. Okay? There's subtractors. They come into your office and they typically come in as soon as you get them there, and they come in drinking their coffee. And then they come in and they sit in your chair, and then they, then you, of course, you ask them, how are you? Wrong, right? Because then they take out their energy-sucking, drama-dumping machine, and they hook it up to you, and by the time those 45 minutes are done, you need Pepto-Bismol, you need, you, you got a headache, you've lost 45 good minutes, and then they have the nerve, they'll come back at lunchtime to try it again. Why? What do subtractors do? They take things out of your life, they take things out of your life, they take things out of your Listen to me very carefully. Wherever you are in the world, there are people in your life right now that the only thing that they do is take, even if it's your mother, it's time to manage that. Because here is the mathematical equation. One plus one is two, right? But if you have two and you have subtractors, you're going to keep on doing what? Going back, going back, going back. Your life cannot get to the place it's supposed to be, which is the place of excellence with the subtractors in your life. Now, here's what I discovered. Molly, I discovered this. I discovered, I thought all the people I talked to in audiences that you were all adders. That's what I thought. And then I realized that some of the people in the audience are subtractors, right? You're a subtractor yourself. If you're a subtractor to yourself, here's the wonderful thing. 85% of subtractors don't know they're subtractors. They're simply socialized. You were taught to be a subtractor. You were taught to take. It's not, it's not like you're intentionally wanting to be mean and terrible. You were just taught to do that. So because it's an inverse relationship to adding, if you can become a subtractor, you can become an adder. Now, the most dangerous of the four types of people are dividers. Dividers know exactly what they're doing. They know how to do it. They target you to do it. And here's how you know a divider is in your life. All of the adders move away from you because dividers isolate you and manipulate you and make you think that they're the only one that you can depend on. Here's my question to you. Who are you going to be? You're, you're powerful. You have all of this power. Who are you going to be? Here's why I came to this talk. I came to make sure that with intention, say intention, say it loud, say intention. Yes. With intention, you make a decision to be an adder. And for those of you who have big dreams and big vision, to be a multiplier. 
because the world needs multipliers. But boy, the world needs a lot of adders. And that's you and you and you and you and you. Thank you so much for having me today.